because we're the bloods in the vein. We're, we're what keeps them afloat. We're the, the bottom of the structure. We're the, we're the foundation. So when you have an unstable or rocky foundation, the top, the higher up you get, the more unstable it is. We're already on the ground. We're grounded. <laughs> you know, we're, we're feet first. So we don't, we don't have as much to lose as governments do. Mm. You know, yes, we are a part of whatever system we're in or whatever nation state we're in. We are a part of that system, like it or not. I work, I contribute, I, I'm still a part of the beast. But it's like, how much am I contributing to this? Like, am I, am I wearing Nike clothing? Am I wearing, you know, all these things? It's not to say that people who wear that, you know, they're more of the problem, but I think governments fear people because they know that that's who they profit off of. And when you, when you're getting into someone's pocket, and that's when the teeth start showing. That's when you start seeing more police presence, more militarized police style, more tools to try to stop you because you still want to keep getting in your money. And it's, it's something that stems from colonialism, like Christopher Columbus. How many of you know Taino Indians? You don't because he killed all of them. If you don't give me enough gold, depending on how much you give me is what limb I cut off. If you, if you give me almost what I want, you'll keep one ear. But if you only give me two, three pebbles of gold, oh, that's an army last. Oh, that's a, you know, and these, these are, again, the f beginnings of oppression of people and all that. And it was a government, it was at the time it was seen as the the crown, but it was, and that was another style of government, governance regardless. And they realized, wow, there's a lot of treasures here. How do we get the treasures, but get those people to give us the treasures? Like, so we don't have to do the work. So that's like the early, for me, for my understanding, my educational background, for me, that's, that's how I can trace back the beginnings of fear of higher ups or of established organizations of people and there, it's astonishing how, how much power we have, but how much power they have as well. They have the power to sell you an idea, sell you this idea of this utopian society where you get to roam freely, you get to express yourself freely, but if you express yourself too much, you might be getting looks and eyes from other groups or other demographics. If you're pro this or pro that, you might grab attention of other things and you're already challenging the establishment. So again, when you're challenging that, you're also, it's an economic warfare and you're getting into their pockets. You're getting in the way of production. You're halting you know, their production and their continuous. And I think once, once you're challenging the establishment and let them know that you know, you're able to direct the masses in an, an opposing, wave instead of a wave that just that they ride that's when they start getting scared and i think that's why governments fear because they know that there's they're the smaller population they're the smallest um they're just the minority and what does the minority do they oppress the majority so the majority are your countrymen as they would call it but who destroys their own people like when they say, you know, oh, you know, and the, the mercy of whoever of higher ups, I was like, well, if there was a higher ups, would all this be happening, really? Like, the higher ups we have here on earth, like, what are they doing? They're perpetrating violence and disappearing people. And for ideas, for challenging their dictations or whatever. But I think that the best tool they have is now that they've instilled their own fear into the people so they don't rise up and challenge them. So.